These photos show a B-52 Stratofortress bomber in flames as a firefighter team races against the clock. Inside its burning hulk were nuclear weapons that threatened to ignite. The world was at the brink of a new nuclear disaster that reportedly could have been much worse than the accident at Chernobyl. The incident took place when the U.S. Air Force bomber was sitting on the runway fueled and ready to go in a high alert status at the Grand Forks Air Force Base in North Dakota. The B-52 caught fire during an engine start while loaded with eight nuclear AGM-69A short-range attack missiles in addition to four B-28 nuclear gravity bombs. At the time, the U.S. Air Force did everything in its power to cover up the story and to mitigate public panic. Yet the photos of firefighters are undeniable, and the situation was incredibly perilous. It was only years later that the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory finally admitted that the incident could have led to a major catastrophe. Nuclear Payload Between the years of 1969 and 1991, until the fall of the USSR, the U.S. Air Force kept several B-52 Stratofortress bombers armed with nuclear weapons on alert 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The intention was that they could quickly become airborne to escape any first strike from the Soviet bloc and immediately retaliate. The aircraft standard loads included two different types of weapons that could complement each other if they ever needed to actually be used. Due to the reliability and incredible capabilities of the Stratofortress, the U.S. believed it to be the best choice for penetrating Soviet airspace to attack strategic targets. Beginning in 1972, the bombers started carrying AGM-69A short-range attack missiles so they could be fired at enemy air defense areas along the path to target the main sites of attacks. Each of these missiles included a W-69 thermonuclear warhead with yielded up to 200 kilotons. The idea was that after the missiles cleared the way, the more conventional nuclear gravity bombs, like the B-28, would then be released, each with yields of up to 1.45 megatons. The Danger According to later reports from the U.S. Air Force, the Grand Forks fire raged for nearly three hours. It could have been incredibly dangerous if the flames had reached the nuclear weapons. Both the conventional explosive bomb triggers and the missile motors might have exploded. Although unlikely to achieve a nuclear reaction, the resulting blast would have distributed radioactive material to the 60-square-mile area around it covering parts of North Dakota and Minnesota. Furthermore, about 75,000 people who lived within 20 miles would have been exposed to high levels of plutonium. At a closed Senate hearing on the matter in 1988, Dr. Roger Batzel shared this information and more with American congressmen and congresswomen. The dangers associated with ingesting or breathing plutonium particles include tissue damage, a very high risk of cancer, or even death. Equally troublesome, when attached to the soil, the particles can remain radioactive for 24,000 years or more. Information Suppression The fire at Grand Forks in North Dakota took place on September 15, 1980, and at the time received little to no public or media attention. This was partially because the Air Force publicly stated that there was no possibility of a thermonuclear accident, which proved to be an outright lie. The truth of the matter was obscured and kept secret. Furthermore, experts were reluctant to publicly speak and contradict the official narrative. Military and scientific experts currently regard the incident as one of the closest moments the U.S. has come to a nuclear catastrophe. The information revealed later raised concerns about America's nuclear arsenal, past, present, and future. The risk of weapons exploding during a fire is considerable, particularly since many of these weapons are aging and use more unsafe technology than if they were made today. Still, most experts agree that it's less likely that such an incident would ever happen again involving a nuclear weapon, as missiles are no longer carried inside the bomb bay. The Incident The bomber involved in the accident was assigned to a six-person crew from the 319th Bomb Wing. At the time of the incident, they were sitting by on alert status for the night. The plane's fifth engine burst into flames while conducting an engine start around 9 p.m. local time. The fire increased due to a fuel leak in the aircraft's wing tank, and the B-52 stayed ablaze for a total of nearly three hours. As soon as the fire started, the crew evacuated the aircraft, and a firefighting team was sent to the scene. The wind was blowing strongly that night, at 26 to 35 miles an hour. The direction of the wind kept the flames from advancing forward of the aircraft and may have actually played a significant role in limiting the extent of the damage. 
Had it blown in another direction, the Air Force may not have been so lucky. An investigation following the event uncovered the source of the fire. The ground crew in charge of maintenance had made a mistake while reassembling a fuel strainer. This part of the fuel system is intended to stop any particulate matter from reaching the engine. Due to the error, additional fuel was allowed to flood the engine, causing the fire. The resulting fuel leak made it even harder to put out the fire, since the affected wing tank of the completely fueled aircraft continued to fuel the flames. The Air Force and the Defense Department proceeded to downplay the risk undergone throughout the Great Forks fire. They claimed that if the wind had blown in another direction, more drastic measures would have been taken. After the directors of the Nuclear Weapons Labs testified before Congress that the accident could have been worse than Chernobyl, Defense Secretary Dick Cheney ordered the removal of AGM-69A missiles from the U.S. bomber fleet. <laughs>